Every few years, there's a catchphrase that goes around that means essentially the same thing. How to stand on business, how to keep it real, how to protect your peace. Whatever the phrase is, it means the same exact thing. But since we're talking about how to stand on business, we are actually going to be relating it to business. My qualifications for this is my two years at community college studying business. As you can tell, I am very qualified. First thing most people don't understand about standing on business. This is the accounting equation. Assets equals liability plus equity. But in the context of standing on business, we really need to understand business as a whole because some of you assume that standing on business just means knowing when to cut someone off. When it truly means standing on your values, a lot of you don't even know your values, which is why you find yourself in situations where you are repeating the same exact scenarios over and over and over again and expecting different results. Your company is at a net loss because of your negligence. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you exactly how to stand on business and how to do so in the most ethical way possible because there's many different types of businesses. A lot of you swear you're standing on business when the business in question is a Ponzi scheme. You might treat people as disposable in the name of standing on business when the only thing you're standing on is other people's necks and not in a good way. Way, babe. But this type of business model is unsustainable in the long term. People will see you can't sustain relationships in your life. Now, most of you who clicked on this video, that does not resonate with you, which means you are more like a sole proprietorship. You are a small business owner selling crafts and you spend hours and hours on your craft just to give it away almost at a discount because you don't recognize the value of what your product actually is. You give to your customers out of the kindness of your heart and every time you think of raising your prices and finally realize your worth, you get scared because you feel like these people are going to leave you. You slowly start to realize everyone around you is somehow using you. You want to stand on business, but you just don't know how because every time you have, it's because someone has forced your hand. Something you must realize, it is not your fault you don't know how to stand on business, but it is now your responsibility because society does not promote standing on business. If anything, society promotes kneeling on it, okay? Because of the social norms we grow up in, because of our parents telling us how we should and shouldn't act, we are deeply, deeply, deeply conditioned into compliance, okay? So you have to understand that. Adversely, you must understand that you are not a victim and you have to reject a victim mindset, which might be hard when every single time you try to stand on business, it's when you're forced to. This often builds up resentment and we'll get into that, but we're getting back to this, okay? In your business model, you have your assets, you have your liabilities, and you have your equity. In this analogy where you are a business, your personality and values are gonna be your assets. These are the things about yourself that you take pride in having, but they can also be a liability. And I know some of you might think, oh, well, if I'm a business owner, wouldn't people in my life be liabilities? No, okay? People are not liabilities in your life and you are not a liability, but there are parts of you that you are insecure about. And in business, a liability usually means debt. And what you must realize about standing on business, a liability is not always bad. And it's the same way in business. Sometimes you get into debt in order to acquire an asset that you need in order to make money. I believe it's the same thing in life. Sometimes you have an insecurity that is actually fueling a certain development that you need in your life. And when you view it this way, you can finally detach yourself from the parts of you that you don't like and see the ways in which they are benefiting you in the present moment, even if you don't recognize it and you know it's something you still need to work on. But I like to envision my liabilities as kind of my shadow side, the side I don't really like seeing, but it's necessary for me to develop my values and who I am. Next, we have equity. Now, a lot of people misinterpret equity as equality, but in business, it's actually common stock and retained earnings. You know when people are like, oh, the stock market, that's what I want you to think, okay? This is gonna be who's investing in you. These are the people in your life that you attract. And I'd like to mention that this is also all perception based. So again, this analogy doesn't fit perfectly. If you are viewing yourself as a company where you are selling your energy as a product, the people in your life that you give your energy to is like giving them shares of stock. The entire point of people investing into the stock market is to get a return on investment. They are investing into you in order to get something back. And there are two types of investors in your company. There are long-term 
investors who equally pour into you like you pour into them. And there are short-term investors who want to pump and dump you. Step number one in learning how to stand on business is to remember the last time you did not stand on business. What happened to your company? You suffered losses, okay? You were sad, you were depressed, you could not sleep at night, you could not eat. This person drained your energy. And how it starts is they pour a lot into you, a lot less than the long-term investor would at first because the long-term investor, they're usually a bit more cautious. It usually takes a while for them to invest large amounts of money into you. This is using the analogy of money, but you get what I mean. It takes a lot more time for someone who actually wants to be in your life for the long term to get to a point of vulnerability with you. This pump and dump person, they will love bomb you. Okay, that's what's happening. And you suffer losses. And the reason why this pump and dump person is able to do this is because you don't understand your value, okay? You are that small business who's selling their product at a discount. And I need you to think of your energy this way. And it might be a weird way to think about the world. I understand that. I'm not saying to constantly think about what you can get out of people. That's a very, very, very weird way to look at the world world. But when it comes to standing on business, I think it's so important for you to acknowledge that you have inherent value, bestie. Don't let someone pump and dump you, bestie. Standing on business is learning to not suffer more losses than you need to. Any company, when a recession is coming up, knows how to plan ahead. When you can feel your energy getting lower, when you go into a period, maybe this is winter for you. You know, sometimes people go through seasonal depression. When you know you're heading into a period of time, where you might need to rely on people more, it can be easy to go back to this, okay? You become a target. And the key is you don't want a lot of investors. You want quality investors. And that comes from learning your own value. If a company gives way too much stock away, that lowers the value of the stock. So what companies will do in order to raise their stock price is they will buy back shares of the company from people, especially when the company isn't doing that good. And this is like a simplified version of it, but I want you to think about when you are giving your energy to everyone. Sometimes it's necessary for you to buy your energy back and you do that by being selective with who you give your energy to. If you have a lot of figurative life liabilities or, you know, insecurities, you are more likely to be shaky on your values, your assets, okay? Because most of your assets are bought with your liabilities. They're bought from debt. You try to overcompensate for your insecurity with arrogance. So you might cut someone off and go on social media and say, oh my god, I cut this person off. I'm standing on business. When you start protecting your energy for the sake of protecting it, for the sake of yourself, when you start learning about your insecurities, that is truly standing on business. Which brings me into step number two. Stand on business by writing yourself a mission statement. You cannot stand on business if you don't know what said business is. If you don't know your values, if you are shaky on your values, you will constantly find yourself going back and forth on your word. You'll go back to that X for the thrill. You'll sabotage yourself for fun because it's all you know, because it's familiar to you. And the entire point is to pay off your debt. When you acknowledge a debt, when you acknowledge a liability, it's not always the smartest financial decision to pay off that debt all at once, especially if it's a very, very large insecurity you have. It's the same with your insecurities. If you have a very big insecurity, you can't just jump into it and the next day just, you know, create this new version of yourself and I'm just not going to be insecure about this thing that I've been insecure about my whole life. Babe, that's delusion. You have to be realistic with yourself and you be realistic with yourself by showing yourself compassion. So the second step is to write yourself a mission statement and get very, very clear on your values. And if you don't know your values, start with what you're not. I hate to quote Kanye. Okay, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, but everything I'm not makes me everything I am. If you don't know exactly who you are, start writing down the things you're not. I'm not a cheater, I'm not a liar. Whatever the qualities are, write down everything you're not and then write down everything you are. Standing on business is learning about your business and you learn about your business by sometimes taking risks. Just as businesses go through good years and bad years, 
you also go through good years and bad years. And so write down your values and anything that is not in alignment with those values, have the strength and courage to cut it off. The third thing I'm gonna say is the best way to stand on business. Take accountability for your part of the situation. Every single time you go through something, no matter what it is, take accountability for your part. And this doesn't have to be in the form of a physical apology to this person. I'm talking about to yourself. Acknowledge what you did wrong for yourself so that you can grow because if you don't you are going to repeat the same exact mistake the more you have compassion for your own mistakes the easier it is to forgive people and also recognize bad people when they come into your life it's similar to tending to a garden you know the person that keeps up with their garden and pulls the weeds every day isn't going to have the same problems as the garden that has a ton of weeds because it became uncontrollable and the last thing i'm going to say your outer world is a reflection of your inner world not exactly right? Not exactly. Use nuance, but your outer world often reflects your inner world. Similar to how a company is run reflects how their customers feel. If a company is run well, is there still going to be a customer that's dissatisfied? Absolutely. But if a company is run horribly, there's going to be a lot more dissatisfied customers. There is bound to be people you come across in life who have no reflection to your inner world. That's their own shit okay? But will it be a lot less of them if your inner world is filled with peace and harmony and you only surround yourself with people who have that same exact mindset? Absolutely. With that being said, you guys, I'm gonna end this video off here. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. I know the analogy wasn't perfectly on point because obviously humans aren't businesses, but since it's been a phrase that a lot of people have been using, I thought I'd relate it to business because I'm a business major, unfortunately. So thank you guys so much much for watching this video and be sure to stay tuned because I have something really big planned for the new year. Also, thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers. I need 10,000 subscribers. That's insane. Thank you guys so much. I honestly have no words. You guys are just, you guys just make me so happy and I just hope you got something from this video and don't be afraid to look inward. Don't be afraid to look at your shadow side because it reveals a lot about who you are and what you can improve on and with that being said, I'll see you guys in next week's video. Bye you guys. Stay safe. Happy holidays.